Today in the news, Intel might ditch 10 nanometers for desktops, AMD's got a bag full of Navi, and Nvidia wants to remaster everything. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. It looks like the company's 10 nanometer process for desktops could possibly have an even worse fate than we thought. Besides the fact that it's been delayed for almost three years now, and that the new process has trouble keeping its clock speeds high, Intel will apparently just scrap the process completely for mainstream desktops, but it will still make it into the server market. This news comes from insider information received by German website Hardware Lux. Their supposed roadmap for the desktop goes as follows. Next year, the 10th generation Comet Lake S lineup is supposed to release with Gen 9.5 graphics. After that, in 2021, Rocket Lake S is supposed to come out once again at 14 nanometers, but with Gen 12 graphics. 2022 was supposed to be the first introduction of 10 nanometers on desktops, but it just looks like Intel will jump straight to 7 nanometers with Meteor Lake. Now, this is still more of a rumor than a leak, and Intel did respond saying, we continue to make make great progress on 10 nanometers, and our current roadmap of 10 nanometer products includes desktops. But like with any roadmap, especially Intel's, things are subject to change. This isn't entirely new though. There have been previous rumors, although really old, that Intel would skip 10 nanometers in favor of a smaller node, but most of those rumors pointed towards a late 2020 to 2021 release. Personally, I think that it doesn't really matter. Intel knows it's going to be screwed for at least the next year or so, but when when it comes to packing a punch, I'm sure they'll deliver in 2022, whether it's at 10 or 7 nanometers. What matters is performance, right? Then in AMD news, it looks like Navi 14 is far from over for us. We just got the RX 5500 and 5500M, but according to some findings by Komachi and Saka over on Twitter, 12 other Navi 14 chips are on the way. Now they might not all come out, but with 12 slots available, we can kind of guess what is coming. First of course is the RX 5300 XT, which we saw on an HP listing not so long ago. I'm guessing the 5300 series will also have a non-XT and a mobile variant. The 5500 series might also get an XT model, and of course, the Apple-specific GPUs and workstation models also take care of some of those slots. Memory is also a factor since device IDs are different depending on the amount. All in all, it's just a bunch of lower-tiered cards that aren't really interesting right now since anything under an RX 5500 won't really compete with the last-gen chips. In NVIDIA news, after the release of Quake 2 RTX, the company has decided to give a chance to old games by creating a remastering program. They're cherry picking some of the greatest games from the past decades and bringing them into the ray tracing age. Their words, not mine. This information comes from a job posting for NVIDIA's Lightspeed Studios. Before working on Quake 2, Lightspeed Studios mostly worked on porting PC games like Half-Life 2 and Portal to Android for the NVIDIA Shield. I think that after Quake, there's a very big chance that we're gonna see big staples get the treatment too, like Half-Life and the Portal series. I mean, we could even see Crisis get remastered and then the memes would all come running back. But what do you guys think? Is it worth remastering old games or is it better to focus on newer ones? Also in Nvidia news, after a long and painful beta on PC and Shield, GeForce Now is rolling out to Android. The app itself is only available in South Korea though, but you can download the APK and sideload it into your device, at your own risk of course. And uh, you also need to have access to the beta, since well, it's still in beta. We still don't have a release date for the service, but the company hinted that it should be coming within the next few months. With Stadia and xCloud on the way too, Nvidia is going to have to release it sooner than later. Speaking of xCloud, their beta is also live. If you signed up for it last month, the invite are rolling out right now. Circling back to some Intel news, it looks like the company is going to shake things up in their upcoming core lineup. A Sys Software benchmark spotted by Tom Apisak a few days ago shows a Comet Lake i3 processor with four cores and eight threads. Now, in case you didn't know, for desktops, core i3s have been quad cores with quad threads for the last few years. Moving into quad cores with hyper threading feels like a move from Intel to give a little more value to its lower end chips now that AMD has uh, more of an upper hand. The new processor is called the Core i3-10100, which succeeds the 
100. The new SKU has the same base clock as its predecessor, and I don't expect Intel to give it a boost clock improvement since hyperthreading was enabled. If this is indeed Intel's plan, I think we can truly say goodbye to the logic of their naming scheme, even though we kind of said goodbye to it a few years ago. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. And yes, my voice is still going away.